Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Quality Quest presentation. Uh, let me briefly introduce myself. So, my name is Marina Zwitzer. I've been part of Levi9 family for already seven years, working in quality assurance. So, when I started my career, like seven years ago, I was told back then, you know, you will constantly need to prove yourself to fight with developers, you know? There will be always like two side testers and developers. And to be honest, at that point of time, I was really confused why I should be convincing and fighting with someone who is in the same team as me. So today, with this presentation, we really want to show you through our examples how not to be in that position if you are doing QA role. But also, for all the other roles, like doesn't matter if you are PO, business analyst, scrum master, developer, if you shift quality to the left, you will build right thing. So we really want to coach you that quality is responsibility of the whole team. My name is Jovana Milanovic. I also grew up at Levinine Family to a QA consultant. From the beginning of my career, my biggest drive was that one common goal mantra and with the right surroundings that proved to be the right strategy for project and team success. Throughout years, while working with different clients and with different teams, I have made some observations and I'm happy to share them with you today. This is our agenda. We had a challenging task of fitting such broad topic into 20 minutes, so we will try to be short and concise. After this introduction, we will go through three phases and we leave some time for conclusion and potential questions. About the topic, we have roughly divided software development lifecycle into three different phases. Prepare, which deals with the activities prior to development, execute, which takes on the activities during the development, and understand, which, which is focused to the activities after the release. The key message we would like you to take with you is that quality is our common goal and we should work together to achieve it. Our primary focus is that uh, mm, to inspire the audience, uh, to ask themselves on Monday, can I do this extra effort to support my team in achieving quality? But we also have like this secondary goal, considering our after lunch time slot. We know it's hard to stay awake, <laughs> so if we don't see any inappropriate sleep like this, <laughs> mission is accomplished. <laughs> So, let's start with the point. Phase one, prepare. Let's uh, hit it off with an example. Here we see an example of a banking app and a screen that shows the assets of the user. We see the total assets and we see how are they divided across different categories. A PO comes with an elaborated idea to enable the user to buy and sell shares in, in, inside of the app. We can see there is like shares detail screen. We can see the balance on them. There are buy and sell buttons. User clicks the buy or sell button, goes through the, wizard, through the ordering wizard, and at the end, we see a different balance on Tesla shares. Everything is pretty straightforward. We were discussing technical details. And then at some point, somebody asked, do we have refresh mechanism on the asset screen? And we were all like, no, we don't. <laughs> and what, what does that mean? It means that even if user bought or sold his new shares, he will see the same balance on the previous screen. So it's kind of a problem. Back to the drawing board. What did this example tell us? It told us that a person who asked that question changed the history of this epic with only a single question. People are usually hesitant to ask questions, especially if their superiors or clients are present. For example, if there was a refresh mechanism, this question would be obsolete. But that shouldn't matter. Questions spark discussion and trigger thinking process in people. So don't ever hesitate to ask them. Another thing we need during product discovery is a quality strategy. Quality strategy represents functional and technical gates our product needs to meet at every time. So it should be defined by the whole team and maintained by the whole team too. Why do we do all these things? To reach shared understanding. Without shared understanding, 
we are definitely not building the right thing. So whenever you have the chance, ask for sum up or sum up, sum up requirements yourself so that everybody is on the same page about what should be done. Same goes with story refinement. To me, a refinement is successful if it brought clarity to everybody involved. So it's not only important to know what are we going to implement, but also how. how uh, is, what is the technical implementation of this requirement, and how does it fit in the current architecture? If the story is too complex, always ask for real case examples. POs tend to assume that technical people know what they mean, and technical people assume the same, <laughs> so you can imagine the amount of misunderstandings there. Well, a real case example will either confirm the understanding or deny it. One more thing we need before we start with development is test approach, simply because it can affect the size. Many times, defining scenarios change the scope of the story, so it should be taken as mandatory before the work starts. How do you make yourself useful in prepare phase? It's by being proactive and doing your own functional and te technical investigation voluntarily. Make sure you know the user flows and how does it work in the background. What can help you get there are logs and database. Logs are the key in understanding the logic. We will mention them several times during this talk. And when I first started working, I was always going to my team lead like, hey, this is not working. <laughs> and she was like sending me back to go and check the logs, get some more details, make it easy, come back. <laughs> and that's what I did. And I'm forever grateful for that approach because I quickly realized how much I can learn just by reading the logs. So if prepare phase is done right, we will actually revisit the, the, the drawing before the bridge breaks. <laughs> With this, we are ending the prepare phase, and Marina will take you through the phase where the actual work is done. <laughs> Thanks. OK, now that we have collected all necessary information in prepare phase, we are ready to move in phase two, where actual, actual development and execution happens. So let's start with test development. I have another interesting story also from my beginnings. I was told, like, write test cases as if someone coming off the street can execute them. So just to be sure, that was the period when Waterfall was slowly, slowly leaving the scene. And these advices were like leftovers from the times when QA was not quite involved in all the phases. So nowadays, we work in Agile setup and quality is really important from the very beginning of the software development, I will tell you one thing. Don't write tests like that. <laughs> write meaningful and useful tests and share them with the entire team. Ask for the feedback, if they have value, if they are readable, logical. Can they be useful in like future? So there is like no point to repeat tests just to have some impressive number. The point of test is to be as I mentioned, meaningful, useful, and to discover bugs as early as possible. What else you can do? You can sit down again together with your team, define the main flows of your application, which, no matter what, must always work. So once you have them, automate them and run them in pipeline. As soon as new code is deployed, test will run, and you will seek quick feedback. So the point is to coach your team to use your test, manual as documentation, and automated as a quick feedback. In test execution phase, we are combining those test cases with exploratory testing. And when it comes to exploratory testing, it's really important to have broader perspective. Like, you really, know, you really have to know what is going on behind the scenes, like which request is sent when a particular button is pressed, from where we read those data, where those data are stored, and all kinds of things. Always check technical implementation. Saying this, I'm going uh, to show you one example how this uh, helped us to, to discover small improvement. Here we can see mobile app uh, designed by me. <laughs> and when user is logged in by default, all tab is selected, request is sent, and response is returned. So on this main page, all cars are shown. Then we start testing filters, uh, switching between the tabs. Everything went well. Uh, data was filtered correctly. But then uh, we took a look in the logs, and we noticed that this API was called really frequently. 
what actually happens, it was that whenever users switch between the tabs, the same request was called, response received, and based on that response, frontend was filtering data. So we already have that response, right? So unnecessary call happened. So with this example, we want really to, to empower you to always dive deep into your application, its implementation and flows. Test each part of application separately and together. Again, I will go with simple example, uh, form of creation of user, and we, we can see that we have two fields. And user type accepts only two values. We start testing, we try negative scenario, everything is in place, error message is shown, perfect. Well, almost, because we then start thinking, what will happen if we try to test our APIs isolated? Then we, say, we took the same re request, we, send, um, we test using Postman, and what happens, it was that we received 200 OK. And what was even stranger is that this record was saved in our DB with empty string, because we have uh, validations on our, our DB level, enum, which accepts only two values. On front end, we also have validations, but we can see that our API was still missing some part of the code. So uh, just to be clear with this example, if this comes as regression bug or any other type of testing, for sure it won't be the top highest prior bug for fixing. But with this example, we want to, to show you that if you test this way from the beginning, you can make sure that you will build high quality product. And now we come to defect phase, and what I can tell you is report. Report all of them clearly with screenshots, and of course, logs, 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 and data. And let's again go with example. Here we can see some bad example like title, button doesn't work, steps, click the button, and result, button doesn't work, error appears. Saying pretty much nothing, right? We know that some button doesn't work. If we take a look in the good example, we can see much more, many more details, like user creation is not working, steps to reproduce, fill the form, and then you paste exact data. What was expected result, user is successfully created. What was actual result, user is not created. And then you paste some findings from the logs. So uh, reporting this way, you are achieving the maximum of efficiency because you save developers time searching through the logs. He already knows which service that doesn't work, and he already knows which um, data he can use in order to reproduce it. So uh, reporting bugs this way, trust me, you will never end up in this situation. <laughs> And now that we reported everything and that we went to those two phases and saw how we efficiently can contribute, we are ready to move to, to phase three to understand. Uh, we really need to understand how to provide long-term support for ourselves, but also for people who joined the team. And let's start with documentation, which is equally important part of every software development. I mean both technical and functional, but I will focus on functional documentation. So be the one who will start writing. Be the one who will educate the team to write and use it. Like whenever someone comes to you and, and asks, hey, how does it work? Just provide them link to the Confluence or wherever you're writing your documentation. It's really important to, to repeat those good habit, habits in order to, to create good culture within the team where everyone cares about documentation. And also we can see potential drawback is of course, to keep up to date. But let's focus on problems that functional documentation solves, like knowledge hoarding. You don't need to go, always go to that one person who knows everything, if you have everything written. So disconnect between business and IT. I mentioned a couple of times, like feedback and ask for the feedback. Also, in this situation, ask your PO to do, feed, to do review. If he or she approves it, that means you are on the same page. Maintainability and future development and speed up onboarding process. Like, you really don't need to spend hours explaining how something works if you have everything well documented. And monitoring. When lifecycle development is done and our product is live, it doesn't mean it's sent. It just means that we now need to monitor our performance on production. And how we can do it? Again, together, as a team, sit down and agree. What is acceptable time what is the acceptable time for our APIs to respond? Of course, not all APIs should respond in the same time. But the point is, set alarms and, let's say, 
trigger, uh, those alarms will trigger each time any of our API takes more than, let's say, three seconds. Those alarms will trigger emails, and then you can have a dedicated person who will go and check emails and logs, 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 and errors. And from those um, findings, we'll create improvement tickets. Then you can prioritize them and work on them. So working this way, you are showing your client that you are proactive, that you are care about your application, and that you really want to reduce possibility that end user encounter some issue or timeout on production. So working this way, make sure that you will go from errors to improvements. And Giovanna will tell you now more about improvements. Actually, I have only one thing to say about improvements, and that is that <coughs> nothing is perfect and everything can be improved. So make sure you suggest functional and technical improvements whenever you can. Choose them wisely. Choose your battles wisely. Not every improvement is worth the struggle. But once you have chosen your, your fight, you also choose the timing, because don't come into the burning sprint with, like, we need to change this color or something. <laughs> so once you've chosen your battle and your timing, push it. Push it, because everybody will be grateful. Everybody, I mean the client and the users. Uh, do not stop with your functional and technical improvements. Improve everything. Processes, team spirit, your own work. What can help you with that is also logs and database. I will now say one example how logs and database helped me to propose an improvement. I was working uh, on a, for a telecom client, and this is just an illustration of the web page that was problematic. Um, we, it was showing the business customers and the numbers that are connected to them. So since they are business customers, there were a lot of numbers. This is the simplified architecture. So we had front-end, we had back-end with its database, and the CRM system, which was used mainly as data source. That CRM system was under a lot of pressure because a lot of other surrounding system were all, same systems were also relying on it. So you can imagine it was very slow. It took more than 60 seconds for users, for customers to load their data. I was checking the logs, testing the application, checking the database, and at one moment, I saw that all those numbers that we retrieved from that CRM, we have them in our own database. How did that happen? I don't know. It was a legacy system, <laughs> but that was the fact. We had the data that we were retrieving from other system. So what I first did is to confirm that the data we have in our, in our DB are correct and complete. And once that was done, I created a ticket, and I informed a lot of people about it. <laughs> so it wasn't easy. It took a while. But at the end, one uh, team lead and architect came who had the same mindset about improvements. So in no time, he implemented the change, and we reduced the loading time from 60 seconds to under 10 seconds, which, which made our clients and users, you can imagine, how happy. So to conclude our speech, all of these nice-to-have activities are what makes a difference in quality. And quality is what makes a difference between pro progress and stagnation, especially if we take, take it further than IT. Lack of quality, or in other words, inferiority, that's what creates problems in both present and future, what generates frustration, what removes trust. Let's not do it like that. If we take this topic seriously, we can make a difference in our own field. We can build quality in from the moment of the epic creation and create an epic application together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this great presentation. We, of course, have a couple of questions for you. So, um, how would you explain the value of documentation on a startup project where everything needs to be quickly tried out and evaluated on the market? Jovana, you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, yeah, that's a chaotic time for, a, for the, start of the, the start of the project. 
nobody takes care about improvements and documentations. But I think as soon as you're settled, if you, if you find to have a stable part of the application when re where requirements do not change, that's the moment when you should start with these side practices, if I can call them like that. Hope I answered. I, I hope so too. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I really like this question. How to break fear of sounding stupid when asking questions? Just be stupid, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> In the end, you will, you will make one good question. So yeah. <laughs> Eventually, there will be a yeah. meaningful question. <laughs> all right. Who you think is the most responsible with the team to define all this you talked about and to motivate and enforce this behavior? Which, which role, mainly, are we looking well, at? Well, all roles. I mean, whenever you notice that you can push something and then there is, the sp there is like space for improvement, just do it. I mean, managers, scrum masters, like developers, testers, whoever. Like, the point is to work as a team and just push it. <laughs> So there is a responsibility across Shared. the whole team. Yes. Shared. Maybe scrum masters would be the one who would like raise the awareness about those stuff, but in the end I think it's F the same. Yeah, F it's everyone's F responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions from the crowd? I'll take that as a no. Then please uh, let's give one more round of applause for our lovely ladies. Thank you.